welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming another Will I Buy It video. Um, there is a lot of new stuff coming out, so I'm going to stop blabbering and get right into it. As always, I'm going to use Trendwood One's Instagram to kind of talk about the new releases. So let's get started. So looks like ColourPop is coming out with a new addition. They are adding 42 foundations to their collection as well as three loose powders and six blotting powders. Now, at first, when I saw this, I was really, really excited because I do like a lot of ColourPop's products, including their no filter concealer. The only thing I'm worried about with this is finding the correct shade online. I feel like that's going to be a little tricky just looking at them in the bottles. I mean, there's a lot of variety there, so I feel like it's going to be a little bit hard. I wonder if these shades will come to Ulta stores because that will definitely make it a little bit easier to shop complexion products from them. I think it's a good price point at $12. It's very competitive with drugstore pricing. The only thing that has me nervous is I actually watched Kathleen Light's video on the foundation and she has dry skin. I have normal to dry skin. It's definitely more dry in the winter time. Right now it's pretty normal and I was expecting her to like, you know, give glowing reviews on the foundation but from the vibe I got, she didn't really love it. I believe she gave it a B-, minus, which isn't very high. I mean, I feel like if you're trying to sell me the foundation, you know, you should be giving it an A+. Plus. Now that I think she should just say it for the sake of saying it, I'm actually really impressed that she didn't just give it a glowing review because we all know she worked so closely with ColourPop. So yeah, I'm a little bit skeptical. This is going to launch June 14th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is usual for ColourPop. Let me know what you guys think. Are you going to buy the foundation? I'm still unsure. I feel like I should just get it because I love ColourPop so much, but I'm trying... I'm trying really hard not to buy everything, so we'll see how it goes. Um, Smashbox is giving us a sneak peek of something sparkly and colorful that's coming soon. These little pans look beautiful. They look so glittery and shimmery and gorgeous. It's a very tempting photo, I'm not going to lie. But this instantly makes me think of all the glitter-only palettes I already have. Um, like the Urban Decay Moon Dust Palette, which I haven't touched in forever. I haven't touched the Zodiac Palette in forever, and I just ordered the Aurora Palette, I believe, that BH Cosmetics came out with recently. So the last thing I need is an all-shimmer palette right now. So I don't know what this is going to be yet, but just based off of the sneak peek, it's something I am not planning on getting. Now, the Lemonade Palette, we finally know, is launching on June 19th. And the palette is going to be $42, and they're going to have four glosses that are going to be $17 each as well. I'm curious to know if this palette is going to come to Ulta. I believe eventually it will. I really like the shimmer shades in this palette. I do really, really, really wish she had added a more neon yellow shade, but for the most part, I do think the shimmer shades kind of capture the essence of lemonade. So we'll see how it goes. I feel like this palette is going to have decent quality. I've heard really, really good things about Dominique Cosmetics. I think she's like the only big influencer brand. I feel like hasn't got as much criticism and she seems like mostly drama free compared to like Manny and Laura. <laughs> so I I am on the fence. I feel like I want to support her. I think I had mentioned this previously that if I had like a 20% off coupon and the palette was at Ulta, I'd probably buy it. I actually really want to buy the Latte palette and the Lemonade palette. But I keep going back and forth. I actually saw the Latte palette in Ulta stores, and the pans are actually a lot bigger than I expected. I thought they were going to be the normal 26mm pans, but they look like they're a 36mm pan. So you definitely do get a lot of product. I didn't check the ounces, but it looked like, you know, it was very appealing because the pan size was were very large. But we'll see. I don't know. I do like, I really like the shimmer colors, so I think... I wish she had just thrown like a matte green in there and like a matte purple. I think that would have made it really, really interesting. But I don't hate it, so I'm on the fence about it. I feel like I've already talked about the palette, but I'm going to talk about it again anyway. So, okay, next thing that I really don't understand is this Urban Decay Born to Run Travel Inspired Palette. Now, I've heard quite a few people talk about this palette and they're like, Oh my god, this is so up my alley because I love to travel. And I'm like, honestly, like, I don't feel like loving to travel is a reason to buy this palette. I am completely, you know, unamused by the shades they chose. It definitely looks like a very smoky palette and it's giving me like Vice palette vibes from like back in the day. I just feel like for summer I really want fun colors and Urban Decay is so good at doing palettes that are colorful and vibrant. I wish they would do something like that 
you guys should see I have this palette let me show you guys um, this palette so this is the first ever Urban Decay palette I ever purchased like I wish they would do palettes with you know a blue shade like this a green this purple is so beautiful and then some you know neutral colors I wish they did more color combinations like this and if they had done something more vibrant I think I would have been more interested but this one definitely screams fall to me I know Makeup Struggles had recently done a video about a product she wished had come out in fall and I, I feel like this is one of those collections too that I wish had come out in fall the only thing that's really really calling my name in this collection is the eyeliners there is a 24-7 glide-on eye pencil in a shade called Overdrive, which is a deep green metallic. And that is kind of screaming my name. It just looks like a beautiful, beautiful green. And I'm slowly getting back into colorful eyeliners, so I might, I might want to pick that up. So yeah, that looks really cool. Okay, I don't really like to talk about Morphe, but let's talk about this really quick. So um, Trend Mood was doing sneak peeks of these swatches that Jaclyn Hill was showing and everyone was like, oh my god, finally, Jaclyn Hill is finally coming out with our makeup line. She's been talking about it for years. Here, here we go, here we go. And everyone was getting so, so excited. And then we found out it's actually round two with Morphe. So basically it's looking like she's gonna do mini palettes with like 10 shades. I feel like, I feel like even I want to buy it just because I'm curious, but it just looks like her original palette with Morphe except they broke it down and turned it into most shades. And I feel like the trend right now is smaller palettes. And of course, like why would you sell one big palette for $38 when you can sell four small palettes for like 20 bucks. If most people buy all four, you're gonna make $80 versus one big palette, right? So I'll be really interested to see what the price point is, what the shades are, um, what kind of marketing they come out with, because you know, Morphe, you can just never expect, you just, just always expect the unexpected with Morphe. I feel like they always have some tricks up their sleeve, so I'll be very, very curious to see what they come out with her. And this collection is set to launch June 26th, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Now, the reason I decided to add this little portion into my video, because I want to edit this and have it up tomorrow for you guys, is because Jaclyn Hill basically did her reveal video for her new palettes. And we I had talked a little bit about it being a collaboration with Morphe, but we didn't know what the palettes were really going to look like. So she's coming out with four palettes. And she basically, I watched her like sneak peek video and she said, these are leftover shades that didn't go into the original Jaclyn Hill palette. Um, so I did pull it out and this is what the original looks like in case you guys don't remember what this palette looks like. And this palette definitely has a lot of warm shades. I feel so bad because I feel like I, you know, really enjoyed this palette when I first got it and I haven't used it really since. I'm actually contemplating just like selling this on my Poshmark because really like I, ju I just don't get any use out of it. And so anyway, I was watching the reveal video and my friend Kat like texted me. And she's like, yeah, I'm watching uh, Jaclyn Hill's reveal video and I'm getting it. And I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm going to get it too. So these prices are ridiculous. I mean, $49 for... 40 eyeshadows from Morphe I feel like is pretty pricey. Jaclyn Hill keeps claiming that this is like her own formula that was specially formulated by Morphe but I feel like I feel like I don't know who did the review but I feel like a lot of YouTubers that do very thorough reviews have said that they run the ingredients list through like the internet and it pulls up the exact same ingredients as are in other Morphe palettes so it could be that like it's different amounts of the particular ingredients I don't fucking know okay. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> well, I do care because, you know, I don't want people to get scammed. But I kind of love the idea of the smaller palettes because I think that's what a lot of people have been complaining about with Morphe is that the palettes are really obnoxious. And I feel like now the trend is definitely smaller palettes. I think it would have been really smart for Manny and UA to have done something like this with his Lunar Beauty launch um, just because he did like that mashup of neutrals and colorful shadows and I feel like that's what this palette is too and I just feel like overall you're gonna be you're gonna make your customers happier if you do just like a pop of colors or like matte colors and shimmers that are colorful and then do a more neutral palette for your neutral loving consumers so I think she definitely did that that this is a smart move I don't think you know Morphe ever does anything 
you know, without much thought into it, they, they are going to make things that sell. Some of these palettes remind me of like Model & Co palettes or like Makeup Revolution palettes. The one palette that's the yellow palette rem reminds me a lot of the Melt Gemini palette. Um, I feel like it looks very, very much like that. So I'm excited to have something that's a close dupe of that palette. I personally feel just by looking at it. The only one I don't love is probably the greens. I feel like it's very, very smoky. Um, but I I think I decided that I'm going to buy all of them because it just makes sense to buy the vault for me because I like to review products and so I'm really, really interested in seeing all of these products in person. So there are four palettes and they each have a name. So Ring the Alarm is the red shades, Bling Boss is the purples, Armed and Gorgeous are the yellows, and then Dark Magic is the greens. They're $15 each or you can get a, a vault for $49, so I feel like everyone's going to go for the vault, and this is going to launch June 26th, so um, it's a bit of a wait, but nothing too crazy. I feel like there's a million other things launching um, beforehand, so we'll see how it all pans out for Jaclyn Hill. I'm sure there'll be some kind of celebration party and blah, 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 so yeah, very interesting stuff in makeup today, so I had to get on here and film it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I keep thinking like she said like a lot of people are saying that it looks like the old palette, but I don't know. I don't really see it. I'm sure once we have both like all the palettes, we can do a better comparison. I just feel so bad that I don't use this palette, but recently I've had like the urge to pull this out and play with it again. It's just that I have so many new palettes that I need to review. I haven't gotten around to it. So anyways, that is my two cents and uh, yeah. Now this palette is interesting. This is by the Solo Look and they are doing a Pink Ladies eyeshadow palette basically inspired by the movie Grease. I think this reminds me a lot of, I think there's like two bundles on Sydney Grace's website that has this same color combination. Now I don't own anything from the Solo Look. I believe they have a few different eyeshadow palettes that I've seen on YouTube here and there. And I like the color combination. It's not really me. It kind of gives me like Kathleen Light's Dream Street palette vibes. Um, so it's not something I'm going to be picking up, but I do think it's beautiful. I think it's a fun concept. I think people that are huge Grease fans will probably enjoy this. And it looks like it's going to be available for pre-order June 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on their website. So if you guys have been interested in that, definitely let me know because I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about that brand and that particular palette once you get your hands on it, of course. Now here's something I am so, so excited for. I don't believe this was out when I filmed my last Will I Buy It video, but this is the Shop Violet Voss Flamingo Eyeshadow Palette. And they are doing an eyeshadow palette and a, like a blush bronzer palette. Now I, at one point, owned almost all of the Violet Voss palettes. I have two friends in Sri Lanka that are huge Violet Voss fans, and they told me so many good things about Violet Voss. I bought all the palettes. I actually recently sold my Ride or Die palette because I was not using it and I feel like it deserved to go to a new home. I still have the Holy Grail because I love those eyeshadows and they blend so well and I also have the Laura Lee palette. So I'm really excited for this. I think this palette is beautiful. I like the shades. I'm just wondering about like how much I'll wear the shadows after the summertime but I don't know. I think this is really cool. I think it's something different for Violet Voss. I am still waiting for Colourpop to do a palette like this. I don't know why they didn't do one for their birthday. I was really expecting a palette like this. Um, but I'm glad for Violet Voss because I think like their last few palettes have kind of been like meh. Like um, the Nicole Concilio palette I feel like was a huge flop because that was on sale for like 20 bucks like the other day. The hashtag palette was beautiful but if you owned a lot of their previous palettes you already had those shades. And then they have that other one um, with those pops of green. What was that one called? I can't remember, but if I do remember, I'll put it on the screen here. That one looked almost like the Laura Lee palette, so I was like, I'm not buying that. But this one, I want. I want really bad. And it's set to come out mid-July, so I will keep you guys updated as soon as we find out more from them. So Shop Hush is launching this palette called the Atlantis Palette by Face Candy Makeup. And this will be available on the Shop Hush app on June 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now this is basically a copy of Tarte's April Fool's Joke palette, I See Betch. If you guys haven't seen it, I'll pop up a picture right here. 
Um, basically, that palette was an April Fool's joke. The internet went crazy. Everybody got mad at Tarte. And then a whole bunch of, in not a whole bunch, two indie brands did their own version, Sydney Grace and Davina. I actually picked up Sydney Grace's version and it's beautiful. So I won't be buying this one called Atlantis, but if it's something you're interested in, I would recommend it. Shop Hush does have an app and I believe they do free shipping on like everything. So it might be cool for you guys to check it out. I don't know anything about face candy, but it's also only $14. So if you don't like it, I don't think it'll be the end of the world. I think... That'll be interesting to see how much people like that particular palette because it'll be kind of shady, you know, because Tarte's working on some colorful eyeshadows apparently. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what they come out with. I'm not too hopeful, but we'll see. Okay, this is interesting. A Makeup Forever is coming out with a new matte velvet skin foundation, which is supposed to be full coverage. So I believe they already have a velvet skin foundation, but this says it's new packaging and new formula, so I'm going to just call it a new foundation. There's not really much information on when it's coming out. Now, I tried Makeup Forever a few years ago, and I could never, like, really narrow down my shade, and it was never, like, a foundation that really, like, knocked my socks off. So I haven't gone back to that brand. If you guys are big fans of Makeup Forever, will you let me know what your thoughts are and which foundation from them is your favorite? I do love that they've always had a really, really big range of colors, but as far as like which one to go with or like finding my color, I haven't had too much luck with. So yeah, I'd be interested to know how many of you like Makeup Forever's foundation line. Uh, MAC X Aaliyah is coming out June 21st online and in stores and I don't know guys, I am actually trying really hard to get rid of a lot of my MAC limited edition stuff. So if you guys haven't checked out my Poshmark, the link is down below. But I used to be one of those people that I would always buy like the MAC limited edition like packaging. Especially the lipsticks. I was really into MAC lipsticks at one point. But after a while you kind of realize that all the shades are recycled and they look the same. There's always like a nude, a red, a burgundy. Like after you buy a few of the limited edition collections you're kind of really stockpiling the same shades over and over again so yeah I've kind of put the kibosh on that and I've never been a huge fan of MAC eyeshadows nor have I really liked their lip glosses so I do like some of their powder products again even with their foundations it's hit or miss for me I can't ever find the right shade sometimes NC42 is too orange sometimes it's too light I can never figure it out so I've given up on that and I think this pal this collection is going to be wonderful for people that love Aaliyah and I think I'm going to not buy anything from this collection and leave it for people that actually love her and are her fans but I think it's really cool that they are you know kind of paying homage to an icon from back in the day so that's really really cool okay NARS is coming out with some new single colorful eyeshadows so that's going to be really exciting. It looks like they have some really, really, really beautiful colors. Holy crap. The only thing with NARS is their stuff is so expensive. It's like I can buy like a, like a palette if I were to buy two shades. That's the only thing. I used to be a huge NARS fan. I used to have a lot of their duos. But I haven't bought any of their single shadows in a long time. And let me see here. Does it give the price of these? Mm, it doesn't say but I'm sure they're coming out soon and that yellow and that blue are really calling my name but I won't I won't be buying anything from them okay I've seen a lot of people talking about this this is that Nabla is coming out with a new line and it looks like they are doing a bunch of complexion products these will launch June 7th so they've already launched and I believe this is a Italian makeup brand they have those two palettes and I've heard a lot of good things but honestly I feel like there are so many things to try here in the U.S. as far as complexion products go. I really don't want to spend the money on like shipping and stuff from an Italian brand, but I'm excited to see my European YouTube friends review those products if they end up getting them. Now let's talk about this really quick. I don't usually like to talk about like brands that I don't really like, but Tarte dropped a whole collection last week called the Trust and Fairy Dr <laughs> Trust and Fairy Dust Collection. Now, there's a bunch of stuff in here. There's an eye and cheek palette, brush set, mascara, fairy dust glitter, double duty lipsticks, magnetic palette, a whole bunch of stuff. And 
I must say, like, the 13-year-old girl inside me is just like, oh my god, it's so pink and glittery and beautiful. And, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, if I was in a different place in my life, I think this would be really fun. I feel like a year ago, two years ago, I'd be all over this because I did buy the unicorn collection. I'm not gonna lie. I have the brushes still. I got rid of everything else, but, yeah, I was into that. I was into that. Um, but now... As I'm slowly approaching the ripe old age of 30, this is just like too much. I think the mascara is actually really cute. I love the pink packaging, but I just wish Tarte would like... I don't even know because I can't really say I wish Tarte would stop making this stuff because maybe I'm not tar Tarte's like target market. Um, I think Tarte's target age group is probably under 25 um, and like high school girls that really love this stuff. So I think we gotta stop ragging on Tarte to like appeal to my age group. I think maybe as YouTube we should just decide to leave Tarte alone and if you like Tarte, you like Tarte. If you don't like Tarte, whatever. I personally am just like, why am I expecting every I should like every makeup company to cater to me? I shouldn't expect that because there's other brands that are catering to people my age and that's okay. So I'm happy with my indie brands and all that jazz but yeah, that, that collection was very pink. It was it was definitely something. It was something. Now, I really want to buy this foundation, but I'm going to wait. This is the Lawless Woke Up Like This Flawless Finish Foundation. And I believe it retails for $46, and they have 20 shades. They are cruelty-free. And this brand, I believe they have some lip, liquid lipsticks. And I've heard so many YouTubers talk about how good the liquid lipsticks are. That it makes me want to try them but I looked at the shades and they don't really have a lot of variety when as far as the shades and I'm like oh I don't think any of those are gonna look good on me so I decided not to try out the liquid lipsticks plus they're expensive AF so I'm gonna wait but I'm really really curious on how good this foundation is because I don't know I'm kind of a foundation junkie too so It'll be interesting to see what those are like. If you try them out, definitely let me know. Ju Juvia's Place is coming out with a mini magic palette. I wish they had done the mini palettes before they had done the full-size palettes, but you guys know, obviously, it was a marketing thing. They're obviously going to try and sell the big palette first because they're going to make more money. I believe the mini is $25, and it is available, so you guys can shop it. The Magic Palette is a really beautiful, I definitely think it's a decent dupe for the Kavan D 10th Anniversary Palette if you don't want to splurge on that. I would recommend the Juvia's Place Palette, the green, the green, the one green that's in the Kavan D Palette is very similar to the Magic Palette. I even swatched them in my Kat Von D video, so if you want to see that review, if it's up already, I'll try and remember to link it for you guys. Okay, let's talk about NARS one more time. Now, they just launched a full vinyl lip lacquer, and looks like they're coming out with a whole collection of these. Looks like it's going to be a lip gloss, of course, in true NARS fashion. The packaging is gorgeous. It's going to be $26. I'm going to hard pass because I don't like lip gloss enough to spend that kind of money, but if you guys are huge lip gloss fans, I feel like NARS usually kills it when it comes to anything. Makeup-wise, there's not a lot from them that I don't enjoy, so... Yeah, it might be something you want to keep in mind. Victoria Beckham is coming out with her own skincare line. And uh, I don't know. I definitely splurge on high-end skincare. I'm not going to lie. It'll definitely be interesting to see what kind of products she comes out with and what the price point will be. Her uh, collab with Estee Lauder, I feel like a lot of those products were definitely a little bit overpriced as far as my budget goes. I didn't get any of that stuff, but I think skincare is going to be interesting because, of course, she's a Spice Girl, guys. And I swear, she has not aged, like, at all. When you look at her, she's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lady. Okay, let's talk about this really quick. So, Crayola Beauty. What do you guys think about that? Now, you can buy the stuff on ASOS, which I believe is a UK clothing brand, and they also have makeup and stuff like that. And, yeah, it's interesting. I looked at it many, many times online and I just can convince myself to pay that kind of price. They're not too expensive but it just looks a little gimmicky and I'm not really into crayon products anyway or like stick products, pencil products, not really a huge fan of those. So I'm gonna wait wait to see if anybody will review it on YouTube. I'd be really interested. If you guys have checked them out definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd be super super curious to know. Now let's really really quick talk about the 
Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. Now, this had not been revealed yet when I filmed my last video. I just kind of said I'm really excited to see it and I'm excited to see everything that he's planning on coming out with. I was so excited for this palette because I was hoping for some real potential here once I saw the yellow and the blue. I think I love the first row and I love the third row. I just, I just wish he had done like a coral metallic, a yellow metallic, a blue metallic, a teal metallic. I think that would have made this palette much more user friendly. I am just not a fan of using like those bright mattes in the crease and then using a very neutral glitter on the lid. That would be the look I would come up with honestly. I wish I could buy that one coral shade in the middle of the first row. I think that would be so, so gorgeous. Those are my thoughts. I think for now, I am going to wait to see reviews on the palette and the summer collection. I wasn't very excited by any of the lip colors that he is coming out with. And I have one of his lip scrubs and honestly, I'm not even halfway through it. So I'm not going to buy any more lip scrubs even. And I don't really need any of the makeup bags or the mirrors or anything like that. So I'm going to stay away from pretty much the whole collection. Maybe I'll buy the eyeshadow palette at a later time, but I'm a lot more interested in that Violet Voss palette, so I'm gonna wait and see how it all pans out. Definitely let me know you guys' thoughts on that palette. I know this is a little bit of old news, but I'm very, very curious on what that uh, collection is gonna turn out like and what the quality is gonna be like on that particular palette. Okay guys, so obviously if you've been paying attention in this video, you can see that I'm in a different outfit. So I'm actually filming this the day after I actually shot the original footage for my Will I Buy It video. And there are a few things I missed, so I wanted to come back and talk about them. One of the things I missed that I wanted to mention is Love Lux Beauty's new highlighting palette. This one is called See Me From Space Drench Highlighter Palette. There are six extremely pigmented and reflective multi-dimensional pressed highlighters in this palette. Now I just recently bought the one that has like the shades what unicorns are made of and what mermaids are made of and I'm still in the process of testing that particular palette out. I haven't really worn it on my face or anything much yet so I don't want to give you guys my thoughts about it. I actually prefer this new one better. It launched just the other day on June 9th for $42, but I really like this one. The reason I'm not getting it is because I haven't even used the first one yet, so I don't want to, you know, invest more money into another palette from the same brand. This shade green, the green one called Extraterrestrial, is really speaking to me. It's so beautiful, and the shade Flare and Galactic, these are just really, really pretty shades and I love the packaging as well. It really goes with the theme and stuff. So if you're looking for a really different kind of palette, I would definitely check that one out. It just looks really, really cool and I'm really interested in it. The other new launch that I forgot to talk about when I was originally filming this video is Luxie Beauty's new collection called Summer Sinner. They actually put a picture of this up on their Instagram and this collection is launching on Friday the 15th and these shades look really really beautiful. They look like they are all shimmer shades and yeah I'm really really excited. Basically uh, like I said they launch June 15th at 9 a.m. or 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 11 shimmers and duochrome shadows. They can be purchased individually for $5 or you can get 11 for $50 plus an affiliate code um, will get you 10% off, bringing the price down to $4.50 each or a $45 bundle. So that's a really good deal, I think, for 11 eyeshadows. I mean, that's like a decent sized palette. So the shimmers in this palette, like the picture, the teaser they posted, are really really gorgeous. I'm interested to see if any of the other Luxie Beauty affiliates will post like swatch videos and stuff. It looks like they might have been having trouble getting the PR out in time so we haven't really seen much about these shadows but I just wanted to mention since a lot of you guys are getting into indie brands as well that this might be something to check out. I don't know if I'm going to get them at initial launch. Luxie does do a lot of sales where all their shadows usually are half off. Like I really wanted their metals collection and very recently I think last month I was able to pick them up for half off which was really nice and affordable for me because I buy a lot of makeup so anytime I can get a deal it really makes me happy. Plus I haven't even gotten around to try out those shadows so like do I really need more eyeshadows but these shades are speaking to me. That bright pink color looks beautiful. 
Okay, the other release that is so interesting that they decided to do a Lorac Pro palette for. Now, I feel like this concept has definitely been beaten to death, like, like literally like beaten to death like a dead horse because this palette is about three years too late. It's very reminiscent of the modern renaissance and I get it. I get why they're coming out with this palette because the Pro Palette series is kind of like the Naked series. It's a very iconic set of palettes but I just feel like they missed the mark as far as timing goes. Lorac has done a lot of the Mega Pro palettes and I don't feel like those were doing too well. The last Mega Pro literally went on sale, was it a couple of weeks after it launched? So I feel like maybe now they've kind of focused back on doing the Pro palettes, which are a part of their permanent line. And you guys, I used to be a huge fan of Lorac eyeshadows. I've talked about it on my channel many, many times. All of a sudden, I feel like I fell out of love with those eyeshadows. I didn't like the formula. It's very crumbly. It's very soft. So it's kind of difficult to work with and so I just stopped using them. I decluttered all of the pro palettes that I had. Um, so it's interesting that they're coming out with a new one. I'm excited to see if people end up purchasing this. For me it's definitely a pass um, but let me know your thoughts on it and let me know your thoughts on Lorax formula because I think it's definitely interesting. I feel like if you love it you love it. If you really don't like it like me you're not going to touch those palettes with a 10-foot pole. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed my Will I Buy video. So many new releases. I'm sure 800 more new things will get announced by the time this video is up. But I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye, guys.